we have seen that a common source amplifier using PMOS transistor has the same small signal picture as that using an NMOS transistor and its characteristics are also largely the same. Any differences between these two are only in the parameter values okay? because mu and C aux is different from mu PC aux and VTP is different from VTN. You have to use different component values to get the same performance or if you do use the same component values, let us say the same uh, load resistance and so on and the same operating point, you will get a different value of gain. Okay, but qualitatively there is no difference in the small signal picture. Okay. Now, let us look at the large signal characteristic of the amplifier with namely the swing limits. Okay. Now, this is the PMOS common source amplifier and in this case just for simplicity I will remove this R s. Okay. Although the calculations are exactly the same even with R s, we always get this additional division of voltage between R s and R 1 parallel R 2. Okay. I will eliminate that and I will also assume that C 1 and C 2 are very large so that we can consider them to be short circuits. Okay. So, let us say this is 3 mega ohm, this is 21 mega ohm. So, that this voltage is 3 volts and R d is 100 kilo ohms and R l is also 100 kilo ohms. Okay. This is just for illustration. Now, this voltage V s d in the quiescent condition is 4 volts. Okay. Now, why do we have limits on the signal swing? the transistor can go either into the triode region or into cutoff. So, because of this the value of input V i that you can apply to the circuit is limited. Okay. So, now we will investigate this for the PMOS common source amplifier. The conditions are exactly the same. The condition to remain in uh, saturation is that V s d has to be greater than or equal to V s g minus V t p and the condition to avoid cutoff, I will say write not cutoff is that I d is greater than 0 and these refer to not the operating point values, but the total quantities when the signal is applied. Okay. So, what we have to do is similar to what we did in case of the NMOS amplifiers. Okay. We have to first find the total V s g, total V s d and total I d and apply these conditions. Okay. At the operating point, we have V s g equals 3 volts and V s d equals 4 volts. Okay. Or, if you refer the voltages to ground, the gate voltage is at 21 volts and the drain voltage is at 20 volts. Sometimes, for the saturation triode boundary, you specify the conditions in terms of V g and V d instead of V g s and V d s. Okay, that is also possible. So, I have written those things down as well and the current I d is 200 micro amperes. That is of course, flowing downwards. Okay. So, you have to keep this in mind that this I d in a PMOS transistor is flowing downwards. Okay. Now, when the signal V i is applied, the voltage at this node would be the quiescent voltage which is 21 volts plus V i. Okay. Because, if you did not apply V i or if you set V i to 0, this is at 21 volts with respect to ground. Remember, when I say voltage at some node, it is with reference to the common ground node of the circuit. So, it is at 21 volts plus V i. Okay. Now, this point is 24 volts above the ground because of the power supply. So, V s g you can easily see is, if you calculate the total quantity, V s g total is 24 volts minus the gate voltage, which tells you that it is 3 volts minus V i. Okay. 
Another way to think about it is that if V i it has a positive value, then this voltage increases, and the source voltage is remaining the same. Okay, so the source gate voltage actually reduces because the gate is going up. So already you see the crucial difference here. In case of an NMOS common source amplifier, this would have been three volts plus V i or the quiescent V g s plus V i. Now we have a minus. Okay. Now. The voltage here at the drain, the quiescent voltage is 20 volts. Okay, and what is the incremental voltage at the drain that we get from the small signal picture? Okay, so we have Vi, and this is the gate drain, and source of the MOS transistor. We have Rd. And RL. So VGS equals VI. Okay. So this is GM VGS, and the drain voltage with respect to ground, which is the small signal ground, is minus GM RD parallel RL times VGS. Okay. And in this particular case, GM is 200. Microsiemens and RD and RL are 100 kilo ohms, so this turns out to be minus 200 times 50, so that is minus 10 times VI. Okay. So the incremental voltage at the drain is minus 10 VI. So the incremental voltage here. Is minus 10 times Vi at the drain, so the total voltage is 20 volts minus 10 times Vi. Okay. So Vsd, you can see, is 24 volts minus this. 24 volts minus this whole quantity. So Vsd total is 4 volts plus 10 times Vi. Again, you see a reversal of sign. Okay. And finally, what is the incremental drain current? You can see that this incremental drain current GM VGS is going from drain to source. But here, the total drain current is going from source to drain. Okay, the incremental drain current is GM times VGS going into the drain. Okay, so the incremental current coming out of the drain is minus GM times VGS. Okay, so the total drain current is. 200 microamperes minus GM VGS or minus GM VI because in this case VI and VGS are the same. Okay, so it's 200 microamperes minus 200 microsiemens times VI. Okay, so you see that the crucial differences lie in these signs. So what does that mean? First. Let's try to keep the transistor in saturation region. It will be in saturation if VSD is greater than VSG minus VT, and VSD total is 4 volts plus. 10 times Vi, and in general it will be Vsd at the operating point. I'll write it as Q for quiescent point plus the gain of the amplifier, Gm times Rd parallel RL times Vi. And if you have some RS, you also have to include the division between RS and R1 parallel R2. This has to be greater than Vsd total, which is. 3 volts minus Vi in this case, okay, and minus the threshold voltage, which is 1 volt. And in general terms, it will be greater than the quiescent source gate voltage, okay. And I'll write minus Vi again. If you have a division between RS and R1 parallel R2, you have to include that here, minus the threshold voltage. Okay, so what do I get out of this? 
So, I get I take this to the other side I get 11 V i it should be greater than or equal to 3 volt minus 1 volt minus 4 volt which is minus 2 volts okay. or V i has to be greater than minus 2 by 11 volts. Now, if you recall in case of the NMOS common source amplifier the saturation condition was setting the upper limit for V i. Okay. Now, it sets the lower limit for V i. Okay. You can see that V i has to be greater than minus 2 by 11 volts. Why does this happen? Here, as V i becomes smaller, the gate voltage becomes smaller. If the gate voltage becomes smaller, the source gate voltage becomes bigger and the current through the transistor increases. As the current through the transistor increases, the drain voltage increases because that current is going into the parallel combination of R D and R L. Okay. As the drain voltage increases, the gate voltage is falling, the drain voltage is going up. So, it is going towards the triode region and the triode region saturation boundary actually sets a negative limit for V i. Okay. So, that is the difference. Because the polarities of uh, currents and voltages are reversed, the swing limits are opposite in case of PMOS as compared to NMOS. Okay. And again, I will write it in general terms, V i has to be greater than or equal to. So, all these are greater than or equal to V s g q minus V s d q minus V t p divided by 1 plus g m R d parallel R l. I have already explained why these terms come about. In case of the NMOS amplifier, we have 1 plus g m in the denominator, because the gate voltage is changing by 1 unit, whereas the drain is changing by gain units. So, the gate drain voltage is changing by 1 plus gain units. And if you look at the numerator, this difference is the quiescent gate drain voltage or the negative of the quiescent drain gate voltage. Okay. So, if the drain is well below the gate, then the separation will be large and you will get a large swing limit. Okay. In case of NMOS, it is the opposite. You want to have the drain to be well above the gate voltage, so that there is a lot of room for it to fall. In this case, you want the drain to be well below the gate voltage, so that there is a lot of room for it to rise. Okay. And similarly, if you apply the cutoff condition, we want I d total to be greater than or equal to 0. And again, as I explained earlier, we could also have used the condition based on the source gate voltage. That is, the source gate voltage should be more than the threshold voltage, but by convention, we use this, because we can also use this with bipolar transistors. Okay. And what is the total uh, drain current? That is, the quiescent current 200 micro amperes minus 200 micro siemens times V i should be greater than or equal to 0. And this tells you that V i should be less than or equal to 1 volt. So, earlier in case of NMOS common source amplifier, the cutoff condition was imposing a lower limit on V i. Now, it imposes an upper limit, Okay, because as V i becomes more and more positive, the gate goes up, the source gate voltage falls okay, and the drain current goes on reducing. And at some point, it will enter cut off. Okay. And in general terms, the total uh, drain current would be the quiescent drain current minus g m times V g s and this has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, and in our case V g s equals V i. So, this is g m times V i. So, V i has to be less than or equal to I d q times g m. Okay. In summary, the small signal picture of NMOS and PMOS common source amplifiers is the same and this is true of every other type of amplifier. If you look at NMOS and PMOS, small signal wise they will be the same, large signal wise they will be different. Okay. The swing limits in particular are the opposite. Okay. If in some circuit, saturation imposes an upper limit in the NMOS amplifier, it will impose a lower limit in the PMOS amplifier and similarly for the cutoff. Okay.